reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Thus says the Lord, let the nations bestir themselves and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit in judgment upon all the neighboring nations. Apply the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come and tread, for the winepress is full. The vats overflow, for great is their malice. Crowd upon crowd in the valley of decision. For near is the day of the Lord in the valley of decision. Sun and moon are darkened, and the stars withhold their brightness. The Lord roars from Zion, and from Jerusalem raises his voice. The heavens and the earth quake, but the Lord is a refuge to his people, a stronghold to the children of Israel. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, am your God, dwelling on Zion, my holy mountain. Jerusalem shall be holy, and strangers shall pass through her no more. And then on that day, the mountains shall drip new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and the channels of Judah shall flow with water. A fountain shall issue from the house of the Lord to water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a waste, and Edom a desert waste. Because of violence done to the people of Judah, because they shed innocent blood in their land, but Judah shall abide forever, and Jerusalem for all generations. I will avenge their blood and not leave it unpunished. The Lord dwells in Zion. Verbum Domini. Rejoice in the Lord, ye just. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice, let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Light dawns for the just, and gladdens for the upright of heart. Be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to his holy name. Dominos vobiscum. Et Spiritu tuo. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. Gloria ti, Dio, 
while Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast at which you nursed. He replied, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Verbum Domini. whole month of October is dedicated to the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Our Lady of the Rosary. And in case you haven't noticed, it is full of some of the greatest saints. St. Therese of Lisieux, the Little Flower, October 1st, the Guardian Angels, St. Francis of Assisi, the greatest saint, not being partial being a Franciscan, St. Faustina, then Our Lady of the Rosary the other day we celebrated, and going forward, skipping a few, St. Teresa of Avila, and also St. Luke, whose text we read from scripture today, St. John Paul II, and some of these great saints, the whole month of October is full of men and women who were devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and also to the real presence of her divine Son, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Eucharist. Wherever true devotion is cultivated to the Mother of God, there is always a strong sense along with that of true devotion to the real presence. Mary and our Lord go together. Why is this? Because Mary, by an act of faith and by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, gave God a human nature. She gave God flesh. She gave God bone. She gave God eyes. She gave God hands, feet, a back. She was, in Greek, what we call her theotokos, meaning God-bearer, the one who bore God. Mary did not give birth to God in his divine nature, as God the Son, he existed from all eternity with the Holy Spirit and the Father. She consented to give birth to God in a human nature, and in doing so, we can say that she gave birth to God. Jesus Christ, the God-man in the flesh the eternal word who exists from all eternity with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit became incarnate under her heart, in her womb, and took on flesh. The flesh of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was her flesh. He was not born of human seed, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. When a child is born, sometimes we say, he looks like his mom, or she looks like his or her dad, or maybe she takes on traits or a temperament like her father or her mother. She acts more like her dad, or she acts more like her mom. Sometimes children resemble 50-50. They take on traits of mom and dad. As they grow up, maybe some of these are more prominent, maybe traits of grandparents, half mom and half dad look like mom, maybe some look like siblings or other uncles and aunts. 
In the case of Jesus Christ, there was no question about who he would look like and who he did look like because he was of Mary alone by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. He was her flesh. Jesus Christ would have looked like his virgin mother, 100%. And wouldn't it seem logical that we would want to draw close to the woman who channeled the Son of God into the world? Logically, wouldn't we want to draw close to the mother of God? Just on a natural level, sometimes when anyone wants to get close to a person or get to know a person, they go to their parents to get to know who they are. Their parents know them the best. Jesus Christ in the flesh had Mary, the mother of God. Again, he was born of not earthly seed, but heavenly reality by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. So we draw close to the mother of God, she who knew him and loved him the best. And wouldn't it seem logical again that we would want to draw close to the woman again that loved him the most? Mothers love their children the most. Fathers love their children the most, more than anyone. My mom said to me recently, a lot of people love you. And I said back to her, but you love me the most. And she replied back, yep, I do. Mothers love their children the most. But apparently not to some. This gospel text from St. Luke is well known in some anti-Catholic circles as, quote, the anti-Marian proof text. Maybe this has been brought up to you in your journey of faith. In other words, this text is used to try to convince faithful Catholics that Jesus Christ himself is directing emphasis away from his mother. It says, the text again, while Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breasts which you nursed. And he replied, rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Some people say that, oh, no, he's directing attention away from what this woman said in the crowd. Blessed are you and the womb and the breasts which nurse you. Some try to twist this text to say, look, Jesus is correcting the woman for praising his mother, for carrying him and nursing him at her breast. And some say that Jesus is downplaying the relationship between his mother as not significant and non essential. And this has never been the interpretation of this text from the very beginning of Christianity the saints, and the church's magisterium. We can, of course, agree with one thing, that more blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. That's a common denominator that we can believe with a person that says, that's trying to prove this text in another way. And this is common sense. More blessed are those who hear the word of God and believe. But what perhaps those who use this gospel as an anti-Marian text fail to realize is this point, that the Blessed Virgin Mary conceived Jesus Christ in her womb precisely because she heard the word of God and kept it. 
the two go together. That Mary conceived the word of God in her womb and nursed him at her breast because she kept the word of God. Because she heard the word of God. Because she responded. The truth is Jesus was not the least bit downplaying his earthly relationship with his mother. He was, in fact, exalting his mother and saying, my mother heard the word of God. Right? My mother responded to the word of God. She kept the word of God. The Blessed Virgin Mary humbly submitted herself to the miraculous plan of God and observed it. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to thy word. Mary heard the angel. She believed the word of God. She believed that message that the angel conveyed to her. And in believing, she conceived the word of God in her womb and carried her womb, within her womb, the Son of God for nine months. As St. Augustine says, Mary conceived first by an act of faith in the divine plan, and then in doing so, she conceived. She believed first, and then she conceived. The incarnation of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in the womb of his mother, is considered one of the greatest works of Almighty God. Mary cooperated in the work of God. God took the initiative and Mary responded. And this is kind of the logic of how God works. God takes the initiative, God moves first out toward us, and then there, there's a response. And in Mary, we see this to the highest extent. God moving out, God asking through the message of an angel, and Mary responding. This is why we say that Mary's faith is the greatest act of faith that a human person has ever made. The scriptural verse is saying that Mary's act of faith is the model is the archetype of any act of faith. And the gospel today is also confirmation of the mother of God's own words after the Annunciation at the visitation. What did Mary say to her cousin, St. Elizabeth, when Elizabeth first greeted Mary and the child in her womb leapt for joy and Elizabeth said why is it that the mother of my Lord would come to me and what was Mary's response to her cousin my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant from this day all generations will call me blessed because the Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. So this text today confirms Mary's own words that all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. It's because the Almighty has done great things for me, because he did it, all generations will call me blessed. We should analyze our faith up against Mary's faith. The Blessed Virgin Mary helps us and assists us in always carrying out the divine plan, in always responding to God in always saying yes to God. And how hard is that? To keep on saying yes to God our entire life long. Mary gives us 
the model of saying yes to God. She who knew Jesus the best and loved him the best is the surest model of faith. And she is the one that will draw us close to him.